I will put up a picture here in this video of what this boat actually looked like in 1969. Pretty wild, you would never guess in a million years that you'd cut it down into a, a crab boat like this. So a couple things you're gonna notice about the Southern Girl is the really big flare on the bow and the really, really low bow. That is one of my beefs with this boat is that it has a really low bow. It was originally built to crab and oyster in smaller bodies of water, big rivers and things like that. And I crab pot with it on the open bay, which is not probably the best application, but you gotta use what you got. Notice how the bow has a lot of flare to it. Like you can barely even read girl on Southern girl. Another thing we're gonna notice is how square the boat is. It's basically all workspace in there. And one of the things that I really liked about the Southern Girl when I got her a long time ago is that it's a 34 foot boat, but since the deck is so rectangular, uh, it has almost the same square footage as a 40 foot dead rise like CJ's boat. So I'm gonna walk over here and show you guys a boat that is very, very similar to the Southern Girl in her original form. So this is what the Southern Girl looked like before she got cut down into a crab boat. This is a friend of mine's houseboat. All right, this one's a lot bigger. I think this one's 50 foot maybe. A lot of similarities to the Southern Girl. She, the Southern Girl has a flatter stern. This is a little rounder, but notice how this whole boat, the deck is rectangular and notice the big flare on the bow. Now this boat isn't exactly the same as the Southern Girl, but it's pretty close. So when you have a houseboat, you want the most amount of square footage to be able to live inside. I'll have to show you guys inside that one time. It's a good buddy of mine, Cy, and he built that boat out of, I mean, that boat was a wreck and it is beautiful inside, despite what it looks like on the outside. Uh, and he actually lives in there. So drop a comment if you wanna see a uh, size houseboat tour. Well, you can notice some similarities. The big bow, the really rectangular deck, a lot of square footage here, which kind of made the Southern Girl a good work platform. The reason that a lot of watermen would cut down work boats instead of build the hull from nothing is because it's really, really expensive to build a hull from scratch. There's always a lot of solid fiberglass boats that are pretty much derelicts or free or cheap. So they're really easy to get. And the biggest expense besides the motor in a work boat is building the hull, whether it be wood, fiberglass, aluminum, whatever it is. By taking a boat that the hull is already put together and made out of good solid fiberglass and cutting all the th stuff from its previous life off and then turning what's left into a work platform, you can save a tremendous amount of money and it's a really affordable way to get into an all fiberglass boat. You want a lot of square footage, all right? Usable square footage. So that means you're not wanting consoles. You don't need anything extra on the boat. You also need a boat that does not draw a lot of water. Here in the Chesapeake Bay, I crab in like less than five foot of water. So I don't want a boat draws a lot of water, which means there's a lot of boat under the water line, which means you cannot run it in as shallow of water. You want a boat you can run in shallow water or skinny water as we call it. So the Southern Girl is a basically a flat bottom boat. Actually, the, the hull has a dead rise, which is where we get the name which refers to the obtuse angle. If you look at it from the stern, it looks like almost a flat bottom boat. The Southern Girl did not originally have a keel, but when they cut it down and turned it into a crab boat, they put a keel on it. And I think that's just to keep it more stable in the water. It's also to help the boat track well. If you're trout lining or something, you need the boat to stay on course when you take your hands off the control so it doesn't just yaw, which means the boat kind of moves laterally through the water and forward or backwards. The keel just helps keep it stable in rough water. You really, really want a stable work platform. I've also done a tremendous amount of work to this boat. So if you notice with the Southern Girl, I have the back rack, which, which I built out of garbage. That's not stock. We have a fiberglass and wood roof that's for stacking crab pots on the top. It also makes a nice place for your old lady to sit and get a suntan, but it's a working surface. You know, we can stack pots on the rack and on the roof and we can move about 175 crab pots at a time with nothing else. Like in the beginning of the year when we're setting with all the stuff we need to harvest crabs on the boat, including the tank, the burner, the crates, extra pots. 75 pots safely, which means we can really fit about 125. The rack on here actually makes my 34 foot boat uh, about 36 foot long. I think that this is six feet 
long because I made it three crab pots deep and five crab pots wide. And if you don't use crab pots as a unit of measurement, you ain't no crab. So I guess we'll just start from the back or we call it a stern, uh, which refers to the back end of a boat. So we got the rack here we step down. I just installed these tracks on the floor. This is where the crab pots get stacked and slid to the back of the boat. So I fish what's called underwater lines, which means I have a line of crab pots with a hawk, a buoy on either end. And there's 25 crab pots in between these two hawks, 75 foot apart. That means we fish 25 pot rows. This is the winder, we pull them in the boat and we stack all 25 pots up here, three high, push them all the way to the back till this whole area here is all crab pots. So these tracks are for when we stack the pots up three high, you can push them all the way to the back and it's to help save the floor a little bit. We painted this entire boat, every single surface prepped and painted this year. It's August actually, and we're already down to fiberglass. It just takes a lot of wear and tear and it's really nothing against the paint. I mean, unless I use some kind of uh, two part epoxy paint, it's just gonna wear off. This is a bumper that I made out of a piece of conduit. When the pots are stacked up three high and we're trying to push them to the back or pull them forward, they don't get stuck on these poles. So before the tracks were here and before this, you would go to push a stack of pots and they would cock sideways and get bound up on here. And as you can see from all the little nicks and scrapes, it really actually does work pretty well. Mostly they get stuck on the back side when we're trying to pull them forward. So I just drilled holes through it and put bolts, used some nuts as spacers and bolted it to the washboard there. Heated this up with a heat gun and then bent it in and screwed it. Every crab boat in the bay is different. There is no two exactly alike. And every guy has a little bit different way of doing the same job. It's actually kind of cool. They're almost a little folk art because most stuff is made out of whatever we can find. This is a hawk holder. I've never seen one of these on another boat. I built it out of spare pieces of aluminum. When I built the rack out of aluminum, I had some extra angle iron. I built this and then these pieces of wood used to be my uh, work rail here, this black piece of plastic. So when I built this, I, I used my old wooden uh, work rail and I turned it into a hawk holder because it keeps them up out of the way. It also makes a nice work surface. So anytime I need to move crab pots and I have to stack all the, the, the buoys, this is nice because it hangs off the side of the washboard out of the way. You need lots of space and not a lot of weight on crab boats. The call box is what we call this, C-U-L-L. -L. We call crabs. So the crabs get shook into this box and then it's on a little bit of an angle. I made the legs on this side a little bit higher than on that side. So the crabs tend to slide down that way. The call man, he's either standing here, sitting on the rail or standing back there. And he's calling crabs by size and quality into those white crates called lugs that get put on this motor box. This coal box, I actually made out of a old diesel tank out of a Navy boat. A buddy of mine bought a house on the Eastern shore to flip. In the backyard, there was like this old Navy fiberglass hull boat that like had trees growing in it. It was like a pond. It got this fuel tank out of it and I cut the top off of it and cut the baffles out of it and built myself an a full stainless steel coal box for no, like nothing. He gave me the tank. I mean, to get one of those built would be a few hundred dollars. Apparently new homeowners don't want that kind of stuff, which I don't know anything about. That'd be a bonus to me if the house I bought came with a boat with a pond in it. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. Another man's loss, another man's treasure. This work rail is built out of some sort of hard black plastic. I don't really know what it is. Buddies of mine bought a whole pallet of it at an auction for like no money. When the pots come up, I break them over the rail here. This is called the rail. And the other guy stands right here, grabs the pot, shakes the crabs out. And that's how the crabs end up in the call box. This used to be a sharp angle. And just from years of working and tens of thousands of crab pots, this is worn down from line, just rope running over it. When we set back, rope runs out of a barrel and over here and then through here. So you can see the rope has cut a groove into the plastic. We haul about, I think it's like six and a half miles of rope a day. So that's six and a half miles of rope coming in the boat and then six and a half miles of rope going out of the boat. It's like 13 miles of rope running over top of this rail. Even something as soft as rope will end up 
wearing metal down. I guess the next thing we got here is what we call the winder. This is what hauls all the line in the boat to get the traps off. We don't haul traps by hand anymore. I know your granddad did it and I ain't no crabber and fish a thousand pots a day by hand. Well, that ain't me. We fish 500 a day and we use a winder because I'm not pulling in six miles of rope by hand. And the line goes over the block, under the fair lead, up on top of the winder and then goes down the chute, which is a piece of PVC pipe filleted in half. And actually this is the piece of PVC pipe that used to be this piece here on the old wooden rail. And every line, there's a loop to clip a crab pot to. The loops get stacked on this uh, pole. And then I move the barrel here. The guy that's standing here gets the crab pots, clips them, pulls the loop off, clips them, and then throws it over and the line runs out of the barrel through there, over there, and over the side. Thing is, there's not many people that build equipment for work boats. Just kind of like the boats. You gotta make, use what you got. So this winder is built out of a hand tong puller for oyster hand tongs, which is this part here. The plate behind here uh, used to be an old crab pot winder that was flat for fishing single floats. This is angle iron off an old trash wheel. And this is an old conveyor roller off of some kind of machine that I cut the ends off of and just got the stainless pipe. It's got a piece of ex uh, boat rubber exhaust pipe in here to take up the difference because this pipe was a lot smaller than this pipe and I don't want it rattling around. I think it's pretty cool because it works and I've been using it for years and it's built out of just junk out of a scrap pile. Oh, and these trash cans are for when we want to move crab pots, we put all the line in there. They also make good boat bumper because sometimes I hit that piling trying to dock it. This is a steam generator off of a power washer rig, rigged up to an outboard tank full of diesel fuel, rigged up to a wash down pump that has a power washer hose that goes into this tank, uh, sticks into there. And this tank gets filled full of hot water and this is what cleans the crab pots. The crab pots get dipped in this hot water and it kills the algae so the crab pots don't blow up and get super heavy. This is an old conveyor belt system out of some factory that used to lay down. Like these were the feet. These are old paddles off a trash wheel machine out of the Baltimore Inner Harbor. They're cut up and made into supports. Put this here so I can mount this, all made out of stainless to hold the burner. This is a piece of, I think that's actually chimney pipe, stove pipe, to get the exhaust gas up and out. And this is just a piece of duct work from a house. This is totally improper use of this and probably a total fire hazard, but you gotta use what you got. You know, it's better than dying of carbon monoxide poisoning. This is the uh, wall of pranks and a couple interesting finds here from the bay. This was a uh, this was zip tied to a crab in one of my crab pots is a joke. These are just some odd fishing lures I found on the bay. And this is a little gift from CJ when I hit a million followers on TikTok. I ship crabs all over the US, so I run live streams. You can watch us catch the crabs live and then click a link and order them and have them delivered, steamed right to your door. I'll put the link for that in the description if you guys want to get it. You don't have to order it during the live stream. You can get them whenever you want. In here is a giant, well, giant for a boat this size, diesel V8 engine. I think they're like, it's like 11.8 liter or something. It is a Caterpillar 3208 diesel. This is an engine from like 1974, but they're really common in crab boats and in marine application. They're also just giant push rod V8, so any dumb crabber can work on them like me. Pretty much you can fix anything with like basic hand tools. There's no computers and everything runs on basically magic, hopes, dreams, and diesel fuel. There's like six wires in the entire motor, which is great because none of us are very good electric. There is some downsides. It's a dinosaur. Getting considerably harder to find parts for these engines. It also weighs as much as a car. I'm pretty sure it's like 1,200 pounds. I know when I pull this motor out of the boat, the whole boat comes up like six inches out of the water. It's got a turbo and an after cooler. This boat came originally with a 320 horsepower 3208, and it was keel cooled, which means on the bottom of the boat, running along the keel of the boat was a bunch of pieces of pipe about 12 foot long, and your coolant in the engine, instead of having a radi like a radiator in a car, you have pipe underwater and you use the water to transfer the heat from the engine to the outside water. With a keel cooler, it's a closed cooling system and you don't have to run cool antifreeze through it so that the, end, the water doesn't freeze in the engine block and crack it. You can just walk away. I'm an idiot. So when that motor blew up after 13,500 hours, I replaced it with a 375 horsepower 3208 
which needed more cooling capacity than a keel cooler could provide. So I had to convert it to raw water, which means it takes water from the bay, pumps it through heat exchangers and every system here, and then pumps the water overboard. Using this boat all year round for uh, oystering or hunting ducks off of in the winter time, it would have been really nice to not have to winterize the boat every single day when you're done. You have a heat exchanger, uh, here, an expansion tank. This is the after cooler, which is a water to air intercooler. This motor has a dry stack exhaust. No EPA uh, regulations here, that's for sure. Greta Thunberg or whatever her face is would love this boat because you put dinosaurs in here and then exhaust just comes straight out the roof. Nothing in between, no muffler, no resonator, definitely no D, PF or whatever any of that kind of crap is. See, now that is an equation I understand. Dinosaurs in, black smoke out. That works. I have some janky wiring that's always giving me trouble and some pool pipe and PVC parts to pipe the raw water. Cooling water out, goes under the deck, up underneath of here, and out the side, right there. When I converted it to raw water, I made it shoot water out the side so that when I'm driving the boat, I can just look over the side and make sure that it's still pumping water. If it stops pumping water, I know there's a big problem. Push rod V8. Cavemen like me can work on it with like wrenches and hammers, mostly hammers. And if you can't fix it with a hammer, it's an electrical problem, I promise. For hydraulics, which runs my winder, runs my steering, runs uh, everything really on the boat. I have a gear pump off a transmission. Down here, this is my steering ram. So this goes down, is connected to a rudder. And the rudder is basically the thing that steers the boat. It's a flat piece of metal that directs the water from the propeller either way. This is just a log splitter cylinder from Tractor Supply. Got two hydraulic hoses, and when you steer, you either bypass fluid one way or push fluid the other way, and it runs this ram back and forth. And we got some pieces of sheet metal cut up, and this is actually a prop shaft coupler converted over into a rudder arm, I guess. And this is the uh, Teflon like retainer bearing that I built in a previous video. Ooh, another thing that I look for in a crab boat, which is super helpful, is a self bailing deck, which means you can dump a bucket of water in the boat and instead of sinking the boat, it runs down the deck and it runs out of these scupper holes. So the water is down there and the deck sits higher. So when you dump water down, it runs out of there. It's self draining. Also, you have to remember this boat, okay? is gross and disgusting right now. We clean it every day, but we work hard on it. I know people in the comments are gonna give, be giving me a hard time about not keeping up on my boat and whatever. I keep up on it as much as I possibly can. I keep up on my boat, I think, a lot better than a lot of guys. I'm not calling anybody out, I'm just saying that some people don't put any time into their boat. I try to put as much time as I can give it and keep it running and keep it looking nice.